All right, this is test eight of the AP Physics Fall 2013 course. Uh, we're looking at the key to that set of questions. Uh, the first set of questions were a set of multiple choice and true false. For problems one through nine, you were to circle the best answer. Was the approximate kinetic energy of a 980 kilogram race car traveling at 90 meters per second? This is pretty much a plug and chug type problem. Since this thing is way below the speed of light, as all things are in this course, you simply use the formula 1 half mv squared, which is 1 half 980 kilograms times the speed of 90 meters per sec squared. So the kinetic energy would be approximately 3.97 times 10 to the sixth joules. Uh, so we're talking about 4.0 at least to two sig figs. So the answer is three. In part number two, uh, we're dealing with another kind of plug and chug. It's asking about gravitational potential energy. Uh, they're raising it from the ground, which we'll call our y equals zero spot, to some height y equal h, which is 370 meters. So, change in gravitational potential energy is equal to mg times the change in y. I've got 55 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, and I'm raising it 370 meters. So, delta ug is approximately about 2 by 10 to the fifth joules. I actually got 1.99 so it's this one right here next there's a problem on lifting a box let me raise the paper up it says student day lifts a 50 Newton box from the floor to a height of 4 meters in 2 seconds so the student does work by putting energy into gravitational potential energy because if it lifts it up gravity is pulling the opposite direction it's doing negative work and the change in potential is equal to the negative of the work done by the force which in this case was gravity so for a we're just looking at delta u which in this case is 50 newtons times 0.4 meters put that all together you get 20 joules of work WB for student does 40 newtons to a height of 50 or half a meter sorry which is also 20 joules so they do the same amount of work so we can wipe out 2 and 4 as possibilities now power, power is work over time. So power in A is 20 joules done in two seconds, which is 10 watts. And power B, they does it twice as fast, so it's gonna have twice the power. 20 watts. Same energy, but not the same power. So, does the same work, but delivers more power. The correct answer is number one. Going to the next problem. Next problem deals with the case of a block on an inclined plane. It says a block weighing 40 newtons is released from rest on inclined plane 8 meters above the horizontal. As shown, diagram. 50 joules are, of energy are removed from the system by friction as the block slides down the incline. What's the maximum kinetic energy of the block at the bottom? Well, gravity is doing work speeding up the block, and that work is the weight times this distance. Or you could write it, if you don't want to use the work energy theorem, you could write it in terms of the conservation of mechanical energy setup, which would say this is the work by non-conservative forces is E final minus E initial. 
So the work non-conservative is equal to the final kinetic, because when it's down here, it'll have kinetic, but we're going to let this be y equals zero. It has no gravitational potential. And this, of course, is y equal eight meters. So it has no gravitational potential. So if you write uf, that's zero. And then you want to subtract k initial plus u initial. But it started from rest, so it had no kinetic. So work non-conservative is k final minus u initial. Maximum kinetic energy, k final, is work non-conservative plus u initial. So the final kinetic is equal to minus 50 joules. That's the energy that was removed. So that's negative work. Plus the potential energy was 40 newtons times 8 meters. Well, 40 times 8 is 320 minus 50 is 270. 270 joules. In fact, it was relatively easy because if you notice the 4 times 80 was 320, the only answers that were less than 320 was either this one or that. This, the negative of that number, is the work that's being done by friction. So this one had to be the answer, even without doing the calculation. Problem 5, 6, and I believe even 7 and such are all dealing with true and false. Work always exists when the constant force F and displacement are present. False. Work is force dotted into displacement. So if F is perpendicular to displacement, then there's no work, right? So you have a block. The block is going in this direction. And you have a force like gravity or the normal. They do no work because they have no component along the displacement. So many times forces will do no work. Stiff springs have large spring constant. This is true. That's what it means to be stiff. Seven, the change in kinetic energy of a freely swinging pendulum is numerically equal to the work done by the tension of the spring. No, that's not true because the tension does no work. There's the, the ball. The tension is in this direction, for instance. The displacement is perpendicular to that. W by the tension is zero. The work is due to gravity, this force. It's what's making this pendulum speed up and slow down, not the string. The string is a centripetal force. It's just changing the direction. So this is false. A body is in motion, then it has kinetic energy. True. By definition, kinetic energy is the energy a body has due to its motion. For a spring that obeys Hooke's law, the magnitude of the force is kx squared. False. The magnitude is kx, not kx squared. That's the problem right there. You got a sliding block here and a couple of forces. And they ask you to identify which one of these graphs here is related to these conditions. Remember that the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. The larger the net force, if it's in the direction of displacement, so by that I mean looking for this external force, and I'm going to dot that into the displacement. Well, the displacement, it says, is moving to the right. So there's delta R. So if the sum of these forces is in delta R's direction, the kinetic energy goes up. If there is no force, the kinetic energy doesn't change. And if the two forces add together to be in the opposite direction, the kinetic energy goes down. In the first one, the net force is zero. 
therefore delta k is zero. And that's this graph. Kinetic energy is constant. In the second one, the external force produces a net force this direction because one is bigger than two. And delta R is in that direction, so it does negative work. At least as long as it's in this direction. So that's what's happening here. Now at some point, the block stops and turns around. And when it turns around, delta R turns around, and the object begins to go this way and pick up speed. And that's what's happening in this part of the path. So this is three. It slows down because the blocks causing it to decelerate in the opposite direction, eventually comes to rest, and then begins to speed up going to the left. The figure below shows four graphs of the same values of the variable force F, and they wish you to rank them by the work done on the particle, most positive being first. Well, they're looking for the area into the curve. This is plus area, this is negative area. That sums up to about zero. This is plus, this is minus. This W is greater than zero. This is plus, this is minus. This W is less than zero. And this is minus, and there's just a little plus. And this W is much, much less than zero. So this is the biggest, that would be B followed by this one, A, followed by C, followed by D. That's how you get that worked. Problem number 12, write the mathematical equation that describes the work energy theory. The net work, or the work by the net external force, is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. Write an equation for finding the kinetic energy of an object moving at speeds much less than the speed of light. Kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the speed of the object squared. Write an equation defines mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is kinetic plus potential. What is the SI unit for work? The SI unit for work is the joule. If a force causes an object speed to decrease, then the force does negative work. What is the definition of a conservative force? A force whose work upon a body depends only on the initial and final location of the object and not upon the path. So work is path independent in this case. All right, that's the first 17 problems on the exam. We'll see you on another video.